Friends, welcome to Worship with Houston and Kalel and Kirk. As we gather from near and far, the Lord dwells in all our houses as we gather as one body around the Word of God which sets us free. Good morning. A warm welcome to everyone joining us at Houston and Kalel and Kirk for worship. This is shared in this YouTube channel and in our podcast. And please follow our YouTube channel if you can. Listen and understand, says the Lord. We come with open hearts and minds to explore and uncover new insight with story and encounter, argument and influence, passion and heartache. We share in the discovery of faith and community. Let us worship God. Hymn 187. There's a wideness in God's mercy. God, we come before you today as your people, a community of faith, a family of hope, a people of love. We give thanks for your beloved Son, our Saviour, our Guide and our Protector, the Good Shepherd to all your beloved children, wherever we are, whomever we are, whatever we are. We are yours and you are ours. We give thanks that your constant and unending love knows no borders, no ethnicity, no gender or sexuality, but it's poured out freely upon each one of us today and in perpetuity. In a time of uncertainty and fear, we ask that this love continues to sustain us through whatever trials we face. As we seek to follow you in this ever-changing world, we ask for the wisdom to see your light shining in every person we meet. Let your example of care and compassion for all people be our guiding force. In the many times that we fail to follow in your footsteps, we ask not only for forgiveness, but for boldness and surety in our ability to carry on and return to your path. No matter how many times we falter, we pray that we will always know that you stand with us. God of all, merciful and loving, we come before you in faith, hope and love today and every day. And hear us now as we join together with your church around the world, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it was great to have a few weeks holiday and a big thank you to my good friend and colleague, the Reverend David Prentice Hires, and our friends at Trino Parish Church for sharing worship with us. Our food bank collection continues on a Tuesday, 10 to 12 and 7 to 8 p.m. at the West Halls, and please continue to support that if you can. We've had lots of our Sunday club this year, starting Primary 1 or S1 this week. I hope you've all had a great time and enjoyed your first few days. Birthdays, there was a few when I was away and some coming up, so a very happy birthday to Callum Conley. Callum's birthday was at the start of the month when I was away. Hope you had a happy birthday, Callum. Jean Aitken's birthday was last week. Jean, I hope you also had a lovely time. Rosalind McLaughlin celebrated her birthday during the week. Hope you had a lovely time with the family as well, Rosalind. A very happy birthday to you. And Mary, Mary Sinclair celebrates her 90th birthday tomorrow. A very happy birthday, Mary. I hope you have a lovely day and enjoy some time with your family. Today's reading is done by Lynn Anderson. Let's listen for God's word. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Do you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith, your request is granted, and her daughter was healed at that moment. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Hymn 724, Christ is a world in which we move.
Let us pray. Spirit, from crumbs you invite us to experience heaven. In the crumbs you are found filling with holy breath, but more than that, filling them with promise. May we be inspired with that promise, that intent, that holy breath. So be it. Amen. It was great to have a few weeks off on holiday. We got away for 10 days and there was only two days of rain. That was a bonus in itself. The first thing that hit me in holiday was how badly I needed a rest. You don't always realise how tired you are until you stop. The second thing that struck me was how much all this talk of new normal really annoyed me. I'm convinced that people just see it because I've heard it for so long without thinking of the implications. There is nothing normal about how we are being forced to live just now and we must never accept that it will be. We are in a phase to assist us to return to normality. A time when we can sit next to friends again. A time when we can embrace. A time when we don't have to wear masks in a shop or a church. It's not normal and it never will be. Hopefully, however, what will become normal is our compassion for those in need. On the whole, we live in a very comfortable bubble here. We benefit a lot of the time, not everyone, but on the whole. But we're now more aware of the needs of our neighbours, neighbours who rely on the food bank, and we give to help them. The reality is the end of food bank reliance is nowhere near on the horizon. It's probably even further away now. And that's for politicians to solve. What we can do is help and be a voice of challenge. The school exam fiasco. Again, on the whole, we benefit, which is great. But in areas of deprivation, they suffered. We need to be a voice that stands with them. I was so pleased to hear my friend's daughter who did particularly well in her exams, speak out against the injustice of friends or others because of their circumstances. And we've seen when voices stand together against this injustice, the government are shamed into change. Maybe we need to start speaking out against more. Learn to do good. Seek justice, correct oppression. Words not from Jesus, but from the prophet Isaiah. Today's lesson in Matthew is a passage and a half. We could fill hours debating the niceties or nasties of what Jesus is saying. It's one of the things that most religions have in common. They're happy to get bogged down in long discussions about the detail and the nuanced arguments about the finer points but they actually miss the whole point of the passage. You have to expand the lectionary passage to include verses 10 to 20 today. To hear properly the shock of what comes out of Jesus' mouth when he speaks to the Canaanite woman. It's a double passage a double passage which speaks about purity and what is socially acceptable and pure. Jesus is not trying to down Jewish custom, but he is trying to teach his disciples once more that what is at the very heart of the matter. Again, like all good religions, we can dance round the details but we never get to the centrality of what's going on. This is Jesus' attempt to do just that. The long and short of it is Jesus saying that you have to move past 
all the cultural stuff and the social niceties in order to get to the heart of what God is about. The details and how we get there are not as important as the ability to recognise what it is that God desires. But of course, that is not as easy as it sounds. We're culturally hardwired to repeat these conventions even when we don't think we are. We live by a bundle of unspoken rules and guard our place in society and how we respond and react to people. Each culture has its own caricatures about the generational conventions. For the UK, it may be the stiff upper lip. For the United States, everything has to be bigger and better. For Germany, it may be about keeping the rules. And we judge each other by these unspoken but ingrained rules that each culture lives by. So, the Pharisees challenge Jesus in the fact that the disciples do not wash their hands, not for hygiene purposes, but for signs of being pure, and say that they cannot be holy because they do not carry out the rituals that show they are pure. Jesus challenges them in return, suggesting that what comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. That's the way we can really see if someone is pure or not, implying the Pharisees are not pure because of what they have just said. What comes out of our mouths makes us clean and not what we do. Hold that thought because that's how we move into the story of the Canaanite woman. They enter a foreign territory and immediately it is unclean. A woman who's on her own, with no chaperone, she's breaking convention. She speaks to Jesus, speaks. How dare she do that? And when she more or less ignores the disciples, she breaks yet another social convention in doing so. So outwardly, everything about her is unclean and wrong and impure. Yet she then speaks, and what she says is the purity of a gospel about universal love. She speaks from the heart about her daughter and how they too have a place in the kingdom. What you say with your mouth illustrates the purity of your heart. And of course, the lovely twist is Jesus himself shifts in what his heart tells him and from some kind of cultural abuse of the woman at the beginning of the episode, his heart moves and he responds eventually with words of grace and welcome. Maybe that's what we miss. That the crumbs that fall from the table are actually heaven's invitation. The crumbs that fall and scatter, the place where the lost show up, that's where heaven is. A friend posted a cartoon on Facebook. It's of Jesus speaking to a holy huddle and saying, the difference between me and you is you use scripture to determine what love means and I use love to determine what scripture means. The day we stop being advocates for the vulnerable in our care homes who are sacrificed by government decisions in a pandemic, the day we stop helping people who have no food, the day we stop being the voice and standing side by side with children who get shafted by the system because they're out with our bubble is a day we should just give it up. Because frankly, 
To do otherwise is to accept a new normal and to stand with the Pharisees and not with Jesus. So when the chips are down, you need to pick your side. I'll be speaking out and in doing so, standing beside my master. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forevermore, world without end. Amen. At this point in the service, we would normally receive our offering. You can support the work of the church by giving by standing order or going online to our website and following the finance or weekly offering tabs. Free will offering envelopes can be handed in at the food bank collection. Thank you for your support. Let us pray. As you have given all for us, we offer ourselves in dedication to you, our God, for your work, your mission, your kingdom. We offer our tokens of money as a sign of our determination to continue to bear witness to your unending love for all people. Generous God, we pray for your blessing in this community as we seek to find you in the midst of everything, as we search for hope in times of darkness. Shine your light into the lives of each one of us, that we may know your love is with us always. We pray for your whole church, a people attempting to live in your example and spread your message throughout the world. We recognise the difficulties in this time more than any other that we face those bearing witness to you. But we ask that all Christians will have strength in your love to continue and to flourish. We pray for the marginalised, those in the edges of our society, living in fear or hurt, attempting to overcome great pain without the comfort and security many of us take for granted. We pray that we, your people, will give everything to help them and that they will find support in you and be their voice. We pray for a global community as the world seems ever smaller, where one country is not immune from the troubles of another. We ask that leaders and citizens will follow your example of peace, love and forgiveness and work towards a better world for all people. We give thanks to you, O God, for the dedication of our teachers and young people over these last few months. As they return to school, be with them, quell their anxiety and help them quickly restore confidence adapting to new practices. We pray that each one of us will show your love to the world, welcoming friend and stranger alike, bringing your kingdom ever closer here on earth. So be it. Amen. Following our final hymn, there's a benediction. We then sing the threefold Amen and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our final hymn, 622. We sing a love that sets all people free.
us. Lord, hear us. Hear the cries of your people. Go into the week with faith. Go forward into all that awaits in this week with faith. For the love of God is with you, surround you and uphold you. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore.